Hey there! Using references is an essential part of making art, especially on a professional level. But searching and sorting them can be a bit of a pain sometimes. So let me give you some advice that I have learned over the years. First of all, and probably all of you already know that, use Google Image Search or Bing or whatever. You just type in the thing you want to make and there you go, simple enough. Well, there are additional things you can do in order to get better results. Go to Tools and there you find a couple of very useful options. If you want to have big, high resolution images, click on Size and select Large. Now you won't get those crappy, pixelated images anymore. The Color tool lets you search images after their dominant color composition. Depending on what you need, this can be incredibly helpful. Or you use it for inspiration, like these green clouds. Some of them look very cool. Under Type, you can find Line Drawing. If you search for some more cartoony looking results, then this can come in handy. Usage rights might also be relevant depending on how you use these images. I won't explain in detail right now how copyright and licenses work. I talked about that briefly in another video. If you're not planning on straight up copying pictures and designs, then usually it should be safe to use any of these pictures as references. However, if you need some pictures that are in the public domain or under a Creative Commons license, then there is an alternative to Google. This search engine, Creative Commons Search, is made for you to find pictures that you can reuse under various conditions. You can filter the results specifically to what you need at the sidebar here. I only recently found out about this, and I wish I did so much earlier. In addition to these tools, you can also optimize your results for what you type into the search bar itself. If you, for example, have a word or phrase in quotation marks, then the results have to have that exact phrase in them, not just part of it. That can come in handy if you search for something very specific. Be careful though, sometimes it can get too specific and leaving out the quotation marks might be better. And you can exclude words simply by putting a minus right in front of it, without a space in between. For example, you might not want to get other paintings or drawings, but only photos. In that case, what I often do is simply exclude those words. If you're multilingual, then here's another tip for you. Search the same thing in different languages to get a wider array of results. Some pictures you'll only find in specific languages. English is probably the one that gives you the most results but it is clearly not the only language in which people post pictures on the internet. Some pictures will be repeats, but definitely not all of them. Also, sometimes it is a good idea to search for 3D models or videos instead of just pictures. You can still use Google for finding them. Especially for studying anatomy, this can be incredibly useful. Okay, so you found some good results, but what if you want to collect and archive some of those pictures? Collecting them is useful, so you don't need to look them up again when you need them at a later point, and also to have all of the pictures that you are actually interested in, in one place. The most straightforward way would be to save them all in a folder on your storage drive. Navigating through these pictures can be inconvenient this way though. I found a super useful program that puts all of these pictures together so that you can look at them all at once in a neat, organized way. It's called Purev. By the way, I'm not sponsored or anything. There might be similar apps out there that can do the same things, maybe even better. This is just the one that I use. It's basically an endless pinwall where you can throw pictures onto, either by copy-pasting or drag and drop. So, what I normally do is, I have my Google Image Search open on one side, PureRef on another, and just throw all of the pictures over that I like. You can make individual pictures or groups of pictures larger and smaller, rotate them, and even crop them by holding C. And if you select a bunch and press Ctrl P, you can automatically arrange them. Not always exactly the way you want, but it does a good job most of the time. By the way, all of the key bindings can be looked up and changed in the settings. 
The pictures always keep the original resolution and quality, no matter how you transform and crop them. That also means that their file size is going to be the same too. PRF saves the complete pin wall in one singular file, and the file size is basically all of the pictures added together. It can happen easily that you get carried away, collect tons of pictures, and suddenly your PRF file is larger than a gigabyte. Also, you can copy one or several pictures at once from PRF to somewhere else. Another useful feature is making notes. Press Ctrl N and you can add some text. That can be very helpful if you want to organize your collection. For example, here are all of the cloud reference pictures that I've collected so far for my next big tutorial video. I know, it's quite a lot. And so I categorize them with the help of these notes by cloud types, perspective and daytime. You could of course also make another PRF file for every single subcategory of these, but that would be just tedious, at least for me. Let's also talk about workstation layouts real quick. If you are making traditional art, then you can simply have your device next or in front of you with your reference pictures displayed. However, if you make digital art, then things might get a bit more complicated. I personally work from my PC and have three screens in addition to my drawing screen. But not everybody has extra screens or devices. In that case, you could either quickly switch back and forth, like by pressing Alt-Tab on PC, or you have your reference pictures open inside your graphics program. You could, for example, open an extra window and drop them in there. Another way would be to arrange your windows next to each other. That takes away a lot of space for your graphics program though. Or you set PureF or whatever you're using to always on top, so it won't be shuffled underneath when you click on another window below. Of course, the internet is not the only place to look for reference materials. Books, comics, magazines and other media like those can be useful too. I would only recommend them though if the internet is not giving you satisfying results. Looking through those pages and maybe even going to the library is much more time consuming than just quickly typing something into Google. But despite its reputation, you can't find everything on the internet. Sometimes you have better luck with books especially if it's about specific professional topics like anatomy. Maybe you can find them as ebooks, but not all of them are available in that format. And then last but not least, you can of course always shoot your own pictures and videos and use them as references. That way you can have control over camera angles, lighting and so on. Therefore, it might be worth the effort. Okay, that's all that I can think of. These tips are just coming from my own experience. I'm not claiming that my methods are the best. They just simply work for me. And I hope that they might be helpful for you too. If you have any additional or better advice, then you are highly encouraged to share it with us in the comments down below. Let's help each other out as artists. Thank you a lot for watching and see you next time.